not important anyway <laughs> presently i am seeing you you ha ah, rather okay. than your screen right when you when is not sharing we can see when is sharing we can see no? <laughs> right ah. right share ha ah. screen broad live seen uh, broadcast zoom as we due to stop screen go to application okay now you are able to see me no? i am able to see because i can't yeah. it seems like i can't uh, share my screen as well as uh, this uh, slides my video and slides if you is not sharing we can see okay switch to ah okay i think now i right. will be able to do that just a second just a second because i think uh, now i have gone to the grid view wait 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 Okay. I'm just understanding this screen. Yeah. Okay, start screen broadcast. Okay, then I will go to this power practices too. Okay, you are able to see my slides? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I done is, uh, Kalik. Yeah, yeah. I have uh, But, sent the. Uh, Uh, active youtube link along with that uh, youtube uh, link uh, this thing okay mm. now this uh, this is uh, active actually this youtube mm. link is now active it ain't navodaya vidyalaya samiti yeah. i am able to ah, see one yes. more slide with this yes 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 uh you, can you share me the youtube ah. link please because yeah, some people button. have apprehension what's the percent okay Okay. So okay. there is active link. Hmm hmm hmm. Ah, uh, Praveen, you need to coordinate also the YouTube comments. Okay, okay. That has to be. మామా చల్పతి మీ ఇంట్లో నా కూడా పిల్లలు పిల్లలు వాళ్ళకి పొద్దున్న నుంచి చెప్తున్నాను నేను మొత్తం ఫుల్ క్లోజ్ ఉందా నేను ఒక్క నిమిషం ఉండాలి బయటకు పంపించి వస్తాను గుడ్ దట్ వి లాక్ ఇన్ మచ్ ఎర్లీ అన్న బెటర్ లాస్ట్ మూమెంట్ Let, but uh, youtube people can listen to us now actually that's we, great they start, yeah i mean uh, so we have to talk accordingly and this <laughs> yeah shall i <laughs> okay shall i start my screens let me check them yeah, yeah. or first first will you show something hey let me do first actually let me see yeah, my slides yeah yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yesterday i had some confusion huh? yes uh, everything right now uh everything like went went out uh, for me yeah yeah yes i am sharing yes. now yeah yeah great the four slides i made you know introduction mm-hmm. and agenda and this okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you can see no okay yeah 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 okay i'll stop sharing okay now you can uh, <coughs> I just prepared the slides <coughs> and uh, yeah i mean is there any time limit it is for one hour only na no i kept it for two hours okay and just uh, you know mm-hmm. so that it uh, uh, we'll stop much before but i kept it all as long as two hours you know yeah yeah just yeah. in case yeah yeah uh some uh, chalapati some Sir. doctor by name what is his name uh, chaitanya uh, chaitanya uh, no pandu ranga krishna uh, wanted to log in i give the link and all okay uh, you know him he is from vaisag 
Yeah, yeah, I have uh, given it to in the local IMA. Yes, yes. Okay. Holding and seeing it. Only four participants, huh? Till now, I think they will join at seven. No, no. We that is we. I'm not uh, kept the Zoom open. Okay. I'm not started okay. broadcasting to Zoom people. Not not okay. them allow them to come in. Right. <clears throat> so you start sending this YouTube link to everybody, na? Yeah, so yeah. I have uh, sent in the groups. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've sent in the groups. Yeah, tell that it is live now, you know, something like mm. that. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The Kims is uh, a medical college, yeah? Huh? Chalapati. Uh, no, this is uh, no, this is uh, this Hyderabad Kims. Okay. This is Hyderabad Kims. వెబినార్ తో చాలా అడ్వాంటేజ్ ఉంటాయి చూడు జస్ట్ స్నానం చేసి వచ్చేసాను అంతే సో త్రీ మినిట్స్ టు గో షుడ్ బి అలో నౌ ఇట్ త్రీ మినిట్స్ సార్ స్టిల్ Yeah. Two minutes will uh, flow, huh? What time yeah, you yeah. Ah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Any question you want me to prepare? No, no. Not mm. I should have prepared it earlier. Oh. Yeah, you can allow, you can allow uh, Praveen. Yeah, you can uh, allow, I think. Yeah. No, no. We have to prepare poll and give to them. We are not done that. Mm. I can do during the thing. Any polls to be given? No, no. Anything poll? Poll about not what? <coughs> పోల్ మీన్స్ యూ కెన్ జస్ట్ హ్యావ్ ఎ ప్రీ పోల్ ఆర్ పోస్ట్ పోల్ కైండ్ హౌ మెనీ ఆర్ యూ ఆల్రెడీ ప్రాక్టీసింగ్ ఇన్ కోవిడ్ ఎరా హౌ మెనీ హ్యావ్ యూ హ్యావ్ సంథింగ్ లైక్ దాట్ డిఫికల్ లెట్ ఎస్ నాట్ డూ దట్ ఇన్ సంథింగ్ కమ్స్ టు మై మైండ్ డ్యూరింగ్ ద థింగ్ ఐ విల్ క్రియేట్ ఎ పోల్ అండ్ so it is how much uh, two minutes remaining we we'll let them come you know yeah yes, i think yes, we yes. should allow yeah we're broadcasting now so, mm-hmm. so that uh, we'll allow. people can yeah <coughs> now no, people are getting in actually mm. great yeah praveen was behind me to get the more doctors <laughs> Yeah. Right, 17. Good. 18, that's good. So we start exactly at 7, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I think it's seven. We can start. Yes, yes. <coughs> Hello. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Good evening. This is Dr. Praveen Ramachandra. I will be the moderator for this session. So the topic for today's webinar is uh, do's and don'ts for doctors in the COVID-19 pandemic. This webinar is brought to you by 
uh, um, Umda Health Care, uh, the initiative of Umda Health Care. So, in the era, in the time of uh, pandemic of Corona, uh, everything is new to us for everybody, not for health sector, even for government, or any other sectors in the country. It is a very new thing, and it has almost stopped the way we were doing the things. And very importantly for doctors also and other healthcare professionals as well. So many things we don't know because since it is a new uh, uh, situation, we don't know what we should do, what we should not be do. Because somebody in the WhatsApp has sent that uh, 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 just you miss something, you may get into the risk of getting uh, virus infection, like something like that. So you should be always cautious because something is new and is highly infectious disease. So what are the do's and don'ts? Uh, so with this, I would like to introduce uh, um, our speakers for today. Dr. Chalapati is uh, uh, MBBS, MD and DM gastroenterology from PGI Chandigarh and is presently working as consultant gastroenterologist in Kim's Vizag, Andhra Pradesh. And second speaker will be Dr. Abdul Khalik. He is also a gastroenterologist trained in PGMR Chandigarh and uh, he is the CEO of Umad uh, Healthcare and he works in Hyderabad, Telangana. These are the topics for today. Uh, uh, when outside the hospital, what the uh, healthcare professionals should be cautious about? And when inside the hospital, what are the do's and don'ts? And whatever the critical staff training is involved because you train yourself, you don't try, train your staff very well, still you can get contact the uh, coronavirus infection and it can spread across uh, either side. And what are the structural changes which requires, because the new thing, what are the structural changes either in your clinic or hospital is required, that will be the fourth topic. Each topic will be 10 minutes. After that, we'll have an <coughs> answer section. <coughs> this, uh, I invite, uh, Dr. Abdul Khalik to speak about what the healthcare professional should do and don't do when he's outside the hospital or in the OP. Please, Dr. Abdul Khalik, please take it. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, for this uh, webinar. We have also shared the YouTube link in the groups for the people who fail uh, to go into the YouTube. They can please log in into the YouTube link and view the comments. And uh, thanks Dr. Praveen for organizing this one. And uh, uh, yeah, we will start uh, with the first topic. The first topic of mine is what a doctor uh, should do right from his journey from home, starting from home till coming back to home and what else to do. So uh, that will be the first topic of which I will be touching. The second topic, uh, Charpati will be dealing what to do in the hospital, and then we'll proceed accordingly. So <clears throat> first of all, uh, if we are working as a team, it's always better to divide the work between the teams, not as an alternate day or once in three days. It's always better to divide a 15, 15 days, because particularly if, for, unfortunately, if some of us will come in direct contact with a with an unknown uh, COVID positive patient, or if some of us become positive to this one, if both, uh, both the consultants are in touch with the patient, then both of them has to go for home quarantine and the work of the department will completely come to a shut. So it's always better when two or more people are there as a working as a team or in a bigger departments where there are so many consultants, it's better to divide the work of 15 days each so that for the 15, first 15 days, one team will be working and uh, uh, in for the second 15 days, the other team will be working. The changes that, that are required are because we need to uh, take regular showers, though it is summer, but still we need to take at least twice a day, regular shower from, uh, from head bath. So it's always better to cut our hair to the bare minimum, though there is a scare of uh, going towards the barbers, which is there, but still we need to cut the hair to the bare minimum. The second thing that we need to change in our uh, appearance, particularly for people like me who have bird or for the people who have a larger bird is to uh, shave the bird to the neatest possible way because that will help in the snugly fitting of the mask whenever we, uh, we go for our clinical work. 
So from home, after taking the shower and leaving to the hospital, one approach is I wear the scrubs right from the home and then I go to the hospital, which I think is the preferred uh, approach. The second approach is once we go to the hospital, the first thing that we need to do is go to the changing room and change uh, from our formal coats into the scrubs. We need to avoid uh, all unnecessary accessories, which we generally take, like the, like the watches, uh, the valets, uh, the jewelry, particularly the female uh, consultants or female doctors. And the bare minimum uh, things has to be taken while going to the hospital. And we need to we need to find some old pair of uh, footwear so that uh, during the uh, once this uh, time period of the uh, COVID uh, infection is done, this uh, footwear can be thrown away. And particularly in, in my home or in the apartment or also in the hospital, it's always better to avoid the lifts and the escalators uh, for two reasons. One thing is these are the locked up places wherein the aerosols can be there and crowding of the places will be there. Second thing is as we are in the lockdown, there's a lack of uh, physical activity and getting up the stairs of a few floors will, will provide some amount of at least some physical activity. <clears throat> it's better to drive self uh, because we don't know because of, with each and every person we are coming into interaction, whether it be our driver, our cook or our housemaid or our staff, each and every one are potential to have this infection. So it's better to have minimal contact and it's better to drive uh, uh, by ourselves. Uh, it's a good idea to keep a large sticker on the car uh, that we are a doctor on duty. Otherwise, particularly in the cities like Hyderabad, there is regular checking and uh, uh, by the police and interrupting to see why we are going and where we are going. So it's a, it's a good idea to keep a large sticker on the car that we are doctor and we are on duty. Within, within the car, it's it's better to keep the Bluetooth if it is available in the car. If, if a Bluetooth facility is not there, so many speakers are available wherein our phone can be uh, attached to the Bluetooth so that repeated touching of the phone can be avoided uh, right from the car itself. Some extra things I generally put up in the car for the doctors who have the car, but for uh, a few doctors or for uh, for DMOs or for the students who are going on the on the two wheelers, all these things may not be required. They can simply replace this one with a small uh, bag, which can which will have a polythene within it, which can be easily disposed. But the, for the consultants who who have the car, these are the extra fittings that I keep within the car. One is a small dustbin wherein I can keep. All the uh, all the things that I remove, I keep a, a sanitizer with me, either a spray sanitizer, alcohol based, uh, which with a gas or a simple push uh, type of a sanitizer in the car. The third thing is I, I uh, tend to keep my uh, regularly wearing mask, preferably a N95 mask, uh, with me in the car. I keep a few covers of uh, my footwear shoe covers within my car as well as a box with uh, uh, tissue papers uh, in the car. As well as to keep the face mask, I generally use a, uh, a glass made up of either Tupperware or, or uh, such type of a glass made uh, tiffin box. Or second thing is if uh, I don't have the facility of this type of a box, then I can use a simple uh, brown paper wherein I can keep uh, my mask after coming from the work. So in the car, these are a few fittings which I uh, suggest. One thing is uh, the four uh, upper things I think are mandatory. One is a dustbin, second one is a hand sanitizer extra in the car and uh, shoe covers, as well as the box to uh, keep the uh, masks. Other things which are optional but recommended are keeping uh, tissues. A few more masks be because if the police or someone interrupt while driving, it's better we keep this mask and uh, uh, low down our a window and then speak to them and we can keep for uh, extra gloves whenever they are required. So once I step out of the car, I am wearing my scrubs from the home. And once I reached my hospital, what I'm doing is I'm putting in the face mask uh, by myself. I am wearing the sh um, shoe covers, putting some uh, tissue, paper tissues within my pocket to use it and using a pocket sa sanitizer. I'm not using any accessories. This is how I would ideally uh, be looking while I step out of the car. And it's always better to avoid uh, giving our car keys to the valet parking because most of the corporate hospitals where we work, there are facilities of the uh, valet parking. It's better if we take it to the place of parking and we park by ourselves. 
and we have to remember that whenever we get a free time it's always better not to uh, indulge in a lot of chit chat because our colleagues and the staff who are present in the hospital are more potential sources of uh, corona infection rather than our patients so once i finish my clinical work from this point to what to do in the hospital will be de will be dealt in a few minutes with by chalpati once i finish i my clinical work i i come back uh, to the i come back to the car and by the tissues uh, that are present in my in my pocket i open the door uh, uh, handle door by using the tissues and inside the dustbin that i have shown i'll be putting in the once i am within the car i will put on the door tissues within the dustbin and uh, the shoe uh, covers uh, that were present in that uh, dustbin as well as Uh, the mask that i am going to wear uh, i will be taking in the in my uh, tupperware or a glass uh, box or within the paper cardboard and all those things so after i go home i am not going to throw it outside because these are uh, biological and hazardous waste i keep it aside and then the next day when i go to the hospital i am going to carry this uh, polythene bag with all the waste and i am going to give uh, it to the hospital when management system so that they dispose it off in a in a uh, in a proper way and once i am at home after packing the car going to my room first thing that i do is i remove my shoes outside of the home keep it in the rack uh, before entering the home it's better not to take the shoes within the uh, within the home <clears throat> and opening of the door i i tend to keep one tissue box uh, by the side of uh, my door so i take one tissue open the knob Though there are, uh, though we clean uh, the knobs of the doors regularly with the sanitizer, but it's a simple idea to keep a tissue box by the side. So whenever we are opening, we can uh, take one tissue and open the door. And once uh, we are inside, by the side of the door, it's better to keep one more trash box wherein these tissues can be thrown. After entering the home, the first place that I go in is uh, my bathroom, wherein I remove all my clothes, put it in the washing uh, machine, uh, add some detergent. preferably with uh, some hot water and uh, uh, wash the clothes uh, in the washing machine with uh, semi automatic or a dryer thing and then i take the shower i take the shower with the uh, head with a proper scrubbing of the hands hair and everything and once uh, only then i come out and i speak to uh, my family members or etc it's better to uh, maintain a separate room this is particularly important for the people who are posted uh, in the hospitals where in the covid infection is there and particularly in the people who are high risk of getting the, uh, exposed to with these uh, covid 19 patients like the people in the icu etc but otherwise also all patients who are coming to our hospitals or clinics are to be considered as as the potential patients so keeping a separate room and a separate bathroom is always preferable so there is a concept of toilet flume now as uh evidence is coming that uh, rectal swabs as well as within the stools also the covid infection is seen up to around the minimum of 11 days post discharge so uh, the uh, while flushing the toilet if the lid is not properly closed small aerosols can be generated which can go up to as uh, much as 6 to 10 uh, inches or sometimes even more and these are the potential of uh, infection so within the home uh it's better uh, within the hospital it's better to avoid the toilet as much as possible but within the home also if we are using it proper sanitization uh, should be there flushing should be done after closing the lid and uh, yeah there should be a gap to other person using the same toilet if they are using and even within the home particularly with the elderly people or with our Uh, other family members if they are having comorbidities like diabetes hypertension etc we should maintain a minimum distance of 1 to 2 meters social distancing or physical distancing is a must we have to be mentally prepared and to speak with and communicate with our family particularly with our elders as well as the kids that this family times are awaited till this pandemic is over which may take a few months uh, uh, so that they doesn't feel uh, that we are we are distancing themselves and most important thing is even with the slightest of our infections whether it be uh, uh, myalgia fever or sore throat the threshold for getting investigated uh, getting ourselves investigated should be high so we should not ignore our symptoms because we will be keeping not only the patients and staff but also our family into at the peril so apart from this one these are a few ss which we advocate uh, 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 taking daily a good amount of sunlight 
and some supplements of uh, vitamins, particularly with antioxidants, having good sleep, stretches and exercises, having a connection uh, with the Almighty, that is spirituality and meditation, taking a smoothie wherein we take good amount of uh, fiber and micronutrients so that our microbiome is healthy and eating in a very sensible uh, manner and to stop smoking if at all we have any habit uh, and always maintaining the social distance is important. Yeah, thank you. Ravi. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Kalik. Uh, uh, now we'll move on to the next topic. When you enter into the hospital, what we should not do and what we should do. Uh, over to you, Dr. Chirapati. Questions we can take at the end? At the end, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chirapati, you can go ahead. Oh, just a minute, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Chalapati. Yeah. yeah. You can start uh, now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good evening. Uh, I am Dr. Chalapati, uh, gastroenterologist at Vishakhapatnam. Uh, first of all, thank you all for joining here uh, in this uh, difficult times. I hope uh, all of you are safe. Uh, am I audible and visible? My slides are visible? Yes, your Hello? slides are visible. Yeah. Is right. it visible? Am I audible? Yeah. Okay, right. So, uh, Dr. Khalik has given an overview of uh, what we are going to do outside of uh, our hospital uh, to protect ourselves and our family also. Uh, but uh, since uh, uh, we are almost uh, coming to the end of our lockdown and some relaxation period, uh, we have to uh, in increase uh, our visits to hospital and start our OPDs or procedures or do inpatient uh, visits. Uh, in due course. So <clears throat> uh, I'm going to discuss about certain points, uh, what we should do and we should not do while we are doing uh, our rounds or daily patient care in hospital. So this may not be a great science, but it uh, comes out of our common practice of infection control during these difficult times. So we should know uh, that uh, uh, what, what we should do and we should not do, but also we should also let others and including our staff uh, involving in paramedical staff or admin staff like that, what they should do and they should not do. And um, in my second part of the topic, uh, I'll be taking care of changes to be made it, uh, in the clinic or in the hospital to suit the uh, current uh, COVID pandemic. So this is the hierarchy of controls uh, that is established by the National Institute of uh, Occupational Safety and Hazards. So this is the hierarchy that is uh, starts from PPE to protect uh, the personal protective equipment. Uh, there can be administrative control changes where they, the, there will be a change in the way that people will work. There can be changes in the engineering controls that is to isolate the people from the hazard that is COVID. There can be substitution. You can replace the hazard. If somebody is infected, uh, some normal person can be uh, replaced. And if there is any uh, change in the protocol, we can see the replace so that we can combat the hazard. And ultimately, we can el eliminate the hazard, physically remove the hazard, like take off the uh, person from uh, uh, the hospital, uh, uh, shift to the other hospital uh, where a better care is needed like that. So this is the uh, hierarchy of controls and uh, we follow from least effective to most effective. Uh, we should not forget uh, uh, all these things uh, when we enter into the hospital and N95 masks, scrubs, and uh, we should pro completely protect ourselves. Uh, no skin area should be exposed when we are taking care of the patients. And um, we should be constantly uh, following the hand, san hand sanitizer uh, disinfection policy. And uh, why I actually uh, put up a second pair of gloves is uh, when we are actually examining the patient, it is always uh, advisable to change a second pair of gloves of a different color so that we'll be remembering this protocol. Uh, so that uh, each and every patient, after each and every patient examination, we can remove the outer gloves. If it is colored in a different coat like a blue or brown, we'll uh, remember that. 
So before start of the day, it is always ideal uh, when you step out of the car um, at the security entrance itself, get your fever checked. And uh, that gives us an example to others uh, so that if a doctor is getting checked at the security, then the uh, rest of the patients and uh, other staff members also get checked at the security entrance. And if there are any uh, signs of fever like that, then uh, obviously it's ne it needs to be addressed before start of the work. This will also remove a stigma uh, that is prevailing among uh, your staff uh, for testing and uh, leave all your belongings in the car as already told and remember to hand sanitize regularly with alcohol based hand rubs. So before start of the day, if you have not already changed at home, so change to scrub suits uh, provided uh, in the hospital or if you have a personal uh, um, uh, uh, equipment and immediately and use these clothes throughout the day in the hospital and change to hospital shoes as well. Uh, it is preferable to wear an overall or apron over the scrub suits uh, for additional protection. It is always uh, preferable to have uh, an inner pair of gloves uh, and remember to hand sanitize even the inner pair of gloves regularly and keep minimum staffing to avoid uh, 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 more number getting exposed to the patients. And uh, it is always important uh, to identify the uh, staff who are older uh, than 60 who are immunocompromised, who have some comorbid conditions like diabetes or hypertension. And you can shift them to non-COVID areas or assign them some job of telehealth to limit the exposure to the direct patient care. So you can check your staff uh, uh, before start of the OPD. You can check your staff, talk to them. And uh, if they have any suspicious symptoms for themselves in their home or in the neighborhood, just inquire. And if there is, if there is any suspicious uh, uh, feature like that, then uh, uh, deal with it uh, and be polite with them rather than uh, shouting at them, why have you come to the hospital like that? So, because they also need the care. And encourage them to practice the same way what you're doing. Uh, doctors may not be the perfect, but uh, we have to go to near perfection. And it is the simplest way to tell them, practice whatever I'm doing. And educate them regularly about the care to protect themselves from getting the risk of getting infected from the OPD patients. And educate them how to identify the patients suffering from COVID-19 disease, like symptoms like fever, sore throat, myalgias, cough, etc. And it is always a good idea to ask them to fill up patient symptom questionnaire forms, checklist forms, and disclosure statements uh, at the front desk itself when they are waiting at the waiting area. And any patient having any of these positive symptoms or suspicious of COVID-19, they can be identified and they should be sent to the emergency at the nearest COVID-19 hospital. And uh, always uh, deal with your staff in a polite way. The staff may be very much anxious and depressed in these difficult times. Uh, so please take the responsibility to boost up their morale and educate them with proper techniques of use, usage of PPE and handle the situation very smoothly, like donning and doffing, etc. You need to continually, continuously educate them. So these are certain precautions we keep uh, uh, following regularly. <clears throat> and most importantly, don't uh, shake your hands with anybody. Uh, that is most important. Uh, whenever you see your colleague or uh, your staff member or any uh, close patient or any uh, uh, known to patient, so please avoid the uh, hand to hand shake. So uh, it is always a good idea uh, to maintain a separate OPD for uh, suspected patients uh, just at uh, uh, bef uh, enter be entering before the hospital itself. So if, if anybody is having a suspicious uh, symptom, then they will be screened there itself. And run some uh, uh, COVID-19 related education videos in the television available in the wait wait OPD waiting areas near the, your chamber so that people will actually get what are the facts. And in fact, if possible, you directly talk uh, or make a video and post it on the television so that they can have a confidence. <clears throat> so this, uh, these are some of the disclosure and uh, questionnaire forms that we follow at our hospital in Vizag, where patient will be uh, following this and uh, they will be signing it up. And uh, uh, the questionnaire will include travel history, any contact, if there is any fever, sore throat, dry cough, etc. And sometimes with the risk of nosocomial COVID infection, sometimes a normal patient can also get infected uh, unknowingly. And uh, they may have, uh, they may create medical legal problems to the hospital and the clinic. So it is always better to encourage them to have, uh, uh, have been wearing a face mask and carry a hand sanitizer, but still they can have, uh, uh, they can contract a nosocomial infection. So it is always better to let them sign this uh, informed consent so that uh, uh, you will be protected. 
so before start of the day ensure that all your belongings including the pen wallet phone watch kitchen keys uh, uh, sorry keys chains rings ornaments and belts are not carried with you either they can be kept in the car or safe locker preferably in the car itself all the patients and relatives present should be wearing a mask and educate the educate them to uh, use hand sanitizer regularly so these are the certain things uh, the first two things you can use a bluetooth you can carry uh, two uh, two sets of bluetooth one at home and another uh, in the hospital and you need not exchange it uh, so that the uh, risk of uh, carrying infection is less uh, you can use a ziplock cover uh, to cover your cell phone and you can handle the cell phone uh, through the cover itself but preferably it is better if you handle it through a bluetooth or hands free mode or you can give it to a non medical assistant so that they can handle handle any calls for you and remember uh, all these patient care equipment like stethoscope thermometer uh, pulse oximeter or patient weight scale and uh, spigmo manometer all these things should be uh, disinfected regularly after each patient use it is very very important and when you are in the chamber um, uh, while examining uh, uh, use a second pair of gloves of a different color to touch the patient and wipe out the stethoscope and uh, other patient examination between each patient change the outer gloves between each patient uh, it is very important and wipe off the pen table chairs examination couch computer uh, uh, keyboard computer monitor door knobs etc with alcohol wipes after entry and exit of patients and relatives so it is very important you can take uh, alcohol there are uh, some disinfectant wipes available or uh, you can uh, use the regular alcohol scrub to spray and then wipe it off with the tissue and similarly most importantly the elevator knobs also need to be disinfected all the formats need to be disinfected because they still carry the risk of uh, transmission transmitting the infection uh, as much as possible avoid touching the face when you are uh, showing your emotions with the patient if you are uh, uh, showing some uh, empathy towards patient sometimes we use Uh, these kind of gestures by touching the face nose and eyes and uh, don't do that even with the gloved hands avoid close contact with the uh, patient while examining or talking to the patient relatives opd can be conducted uh, in halls uh, rather than rooms certain uh, uh, of my colleagues they do uh, practice that but this might cause a breach of identity and may not be accepted by many patients especially female patients and elderly patients and uh, uh, but the advantage is if we do uh, such kind of opd in halls that might avoid uh, uh, you know handling of doors and handles uh, but an alternative is you can uh, use curtains to protect the patient privacy even in open halls and you can still continue running the opds and remember to disinfect these curtains as well the other precautions is use uh, fresh fa uh, fresh paper for each prescription each time uh don't uh, turn around the paper and use the same paper because it will be carrying it might be carrying uh, uh, some infection and uh, uh, after the opd advise the patients and relatives to use alcohol sanitizer and not to touch anything with their hands especially the staircase handles lift doors and lift uh, control buttons if at all they need to do they need to do uh, they need to handle it with uh, gloves or using some tissue paper like that and ensure same uh, ensure the same precautions and steps for, are followed at the pharmacy and lab also it is very important and at the fr front office lab pharmacy a transparent acrylic screen can be placed to uh, use a barrier uh, as a barrier between the hospital staff and patient relatives so i'll be dealing with all the, some of these things uh, in my next part of the lecture and the most importantly never forget washrooms uh, that are uh, uh, present in the patient waiting halls ensure only one person uh, utilizes the washroom at any time uh, ensure proper flush of the excreta and cleaning of the excreta and urine on the floor pan lead and other places and uh, please educate them to close the lid first and then flush it so that there will not be any aerosol spread uh, encourage use of soap and water to clean the hands after use and ensure the proper disinfection of these rooms uh, with so sodium hypochlorite after each usage uh, including the door knobs pistons and taps encourage to air dry or use uh, toilet tissue to clean the hands and properly dispose it off in the appropriate bin and finally uh, whenever possible encourage uh, telemedicine consultation for non urgent patients especially follow up patients who want to refill their prescriptions this would reduce the crowding and physical contact but understand the telemedicine guidelines first before following that and if there is any doubt please do not hesitate to call the patient for physical examination with full protection because patient safety is of prime importance few words about inpatient care so 
many physicians uh, uh, they deal with uh, covid uh, patients uh, including the icu staff the emergency uh, doctors but a few of the gastroenterologists also they do get calls because certain patients they have gi symptoms uh, it is always important to identify and maintain the covid and non covid zones uh, first in the hospital including icu maintain the same precautions for infection control but follow it more stringently as there would be more sicker patients shift to full gear personal protective equipment for all ip care and minimize the number of most importantly minimize the number of physical visits uh, like if you have a habit of uh, seeing your patients twice or thrice uh, per day minimize it and also minimize the staff while you are uh, on rounds uh, especially uh, physician assistants uh, interviewers patient counselors etc and also avoid duplicate uh, staff if you can assign multitasking to the minimum size of staff utilize the patient examination patient care uh, equipment in dedicated way for each patient without exchange very important there is habit of using the same beep machine to multiple patients stethoscope to multiple patients which can uh, transmit the infection and encourage the staff uh, to keep if there is a ventilator or a defibrillator rather than assigning to each and every patient it is always better to take off these life saving equipment to a common area and uh, keep a lock of it and if there is any need then transfer this equipment to the patient care area otherwise if they are lying uh, free in the patient care area they can carry some infection so it is always better to uh, isolate them from the patient care area but keep it uh, in the nearby area and avoid uh, visitors uh, patient roaming outside uh, for a evening walk like that and avoid mixing up uh with non covid patients and it's very important to educate the security staff nursing staff housing staff housekeeping staff and administrative staff about the infection control practices what about cross consultations uh, uh for example uh if uh, the covid patient or some other patient is in is admitted with uh, uh, some other primary care physician you will be called for uh, uh, that there is a diarrhea there is jaundice there is hepatitis so gastroenterologist will be called and before going doing that please remember that up to 11 to 15% of patients can have gi symptoms including diarrhea nausea and vomiting up to 75% of patients can have liver enzyme abnormalities as reported in various series and up to 10% of patients can have jaundice especially these abnormalities and gi symptoms can be more severe especially liver injury in more sick and severe patients so be careful especially in icus try to avoid multiple doctor consultations this is very important because the primary care consultant will call you come and see the patient it's better to avoid multiple doctors having a physical consultation for a single patient you can uh, just consult the patient from outside so what my advice is one primary doctor can see the patient and others can review his records outside the patient area and be available for phone consultation that is important and that is enough also in this difficult times so if there is any emergency procedure is needed always uh, uh, follow the standard precautions and part of it will be discussed in my next talk so most importantly protect yourself but your staff also should be taken along with you uh, as well thank you oh thank you dr chilapati is uh, very insightful and uh, going by the dr carlick's first talk and uh, dr chilapati's talk uh, i am sure that including me many of the attendees are many of the doctors will be following only 3 to 5% of what the uh, speakers could tell <laughs> that Well, how much we should be cautious so it's good that we have this uh, webinar much before uh, the community spread is occurring or before the lockdown is over uh, so i move to this uh, next important topic that is uh, by dr abdul kalik that about staff training in a medical center uh, please kalik yeah uh, thanks chelpati thanks for the uh, very good insight that you have given us uh, uh, so uh, i'll be uh, speaking a, a few uh, insights of mine about uh, staff training though i won't be going into the nitty gritty of each and every step of uh, how to uh, train staff and what are the different protocols but overall i will try to give some uh, uh, of my insights of uh, involving the staff uh, uh, into the management of uh, our patients in the clinics or in the hospitals uh, where we are practicing so the uh, first of all the importance of training the staff is uh, 
uh, particularly we should take care of their safety and if they are not well trained they are likely to do mistakes and by uh, doing mistakes they will become potentially uh, infected with the infection as as well as they are also having the potency of uh, uh, spreading the infections to the patients who come to the hospital as well as to ourselves and once as we have seen a few reports if uh, uh, some number of healthcare professionals are turned out to be positive within a hospital the hospitals are being closed and uh, which will be a big financial loss as well as uh, a, a bad reputation to the hospital as well as the doctors who are practicing over there so adequate training of the uh, staff is a uh, quintessential important step for each and every one of us before we start our practice so with, there should be a change in our mindset as the lockdown is finished and uh, after uh, monday uh, as uh, uh, the government of india has allowed the clinics can be opened we should not be in a mode of uh, get set go go let us go and let us start our practice without properly uh, training our staff so there should be at least three aspects where our staff should be trained first thing is about the self defense of self protection from the corona viral infection second thing is as a team how should we gel up to maintain each and every steps of our hospital functionings as well as how uh, we should be helping our patients during these times wherever uh, uh, the patients are either positive or potentially positive patients these are the three areas which uh, we should be training our staff so before training our staff we should have a very clear cut design of what actually we need to train our staff before uh, uh, that one we need to see what are actually their insights uh, about the disease uh, of a coronal viral infection and what they should be knowing and why they should be knowing and how to train and at last after training them we should evaluate them that are they having adequate knowledge to protect themselves and to carry on the day to day activities of the hospital once we think that they are having fairly good uh, potency of carrying out the day to day hospital activities only then they should be uh, given a green signal to serve the uh, hospital so first of all we have to understand what actually are their insights for that either a simple google form or a paper thing or a simple form can be given to understand about them what actually is their understanding about the disease and uh, we have to take their insights how they want to protect themselves what changes should be done uh, in their each and every uh, specific areas like front office area is different from the pharmacy area is different from an ot area is different so we should be involving the members of different uh, places in the hospital and try to get their insights from them and we should try to uh, encourage them to come up with the ideas how to uh, implement them and we should uh, always uh, listen to their concerns so most of the ideas of how to implement and tweak whether structurally or functionally will be uh, provided mainly by our staff who is working with us so uh, the first thing is rather than we giving them the protocols to do this one this one this one uh, it's better to involve them from each and every aspect particularly the staff people who are who are quite active and try to listen to them and implement them so get the ideas from them and try to incorporate them and reward them regularly so by rewarding them there will be a sense of encouragement and more and more staff people will be coming with much much better ideas to implement within the hospital during these periods second important aspect of our staff training is what they exactly need to know the one aspect what they exactly need to know is what is called as uh, ppe but ppe is only uh, one uh, aspect there are many other aspects and protocols that are required the best way of training them is virtually rather than making them to sit in the class and going to the board and training it's always better if we make all short short videos of how to go on how to do what are the ppe equipment which are required how to how to use them how to dispose it if at all if we need to reuse uh, some of them like n95 masks how we need to reuse if they are reusing it in a personal way so how to how to deal uh, with the money uh, when the patients give how to take blood samples or how to shift the patient from one place to other there are so many protocols uh, which can be designed in a short short videos which we have to circulate to the staff according to their specialty once they get trained we need to evaluate them and then uh, we have to proceed so first thing is they should be knowing about protecting themselves they should have a clear cut understanding of personal protective equipment how to draw for how to wear that equipment how to take out that equipment dispose and reuse those equipment should be there they should have a clear cut understanding that just not the mask alone is important but how we fit the mask and how we check that it is properly fit on this one and what are the different other gear 
to be used according to their specialty, particularly if they are uh, some of the staff members within the sanitation, what is the importance of using a long boots, et cetera, et cetera, has to be re-emphasized to them. Second thing is once we re-emphasize this one, uh, one of the insights is we can make a, a team of two people or three people as a small team, give them the videos. And once they are trained, once the patient, for example, doning and doffing of the PP is there, once the other person is doning and doffing, uh, at that time, the other team member will be looking and correcting him and taking a video. And these videos can be sent to the person who is uh, monitoring them. And once we are sure that this person is doing according to a protocol, all the things, then we can allow them to uh, serve our patients. So uh, as, as a single uh, size will not fit to everyone, making a f just a few protocols and giving to the patients in different areas will not work. We need to customize the protocols to each and every different aspect of the hospital. The protocols in the front office will be slightly different when compared to the lab, when compared to the nursing in the OPD, to OT, to uh, nurses who are working in the ICU. So we should involve them and customize the protocols which will fit them the most. Second aspect which we need to train our staff is about the teamwork. Mock drills should be done uh, particularly in the hospitals about different aspects of uh, hospital, uh, like moving uh, moving in the patients or during surgery or endoscopy or shifting of the patients or bedding, cleaning of the patients, et cetera, et cetera. These need to be done by wearing the proper PPE. So uh, doing, uh, as shown in this picture, wearing a simple a mask is there and, and not a proper PP is there, but by wearing the whole gear, how difficulty will be there for the staff to actually do these procedures has to be trained before. The third aspect is different aspects of what we call it as the movements of truth within the hospital has to be uh, has to be written it down or has to be marked. Like after coming to the hospital till they leave the hospital for each and every staff member, uh, what are the type of the clothes that they have to, or the outfit they have to wear and come, and what what the what should be their workplace etiquettes uh, should be there, and how their eating habits uh, should be, and while using the bathrooms, how to use them, and what to do after going to home. All these things has to be discussed. As short short videos has to be given to them, and uh, should uh, should emphasize them to uh, follow these things. The sanitation as. Uh, uh, Chalpati has discussed and previously we discussed the concept of a toilet uh, fume. So uh, using of the toilets has to be minimum within the hospital and a proper sanitation of the uh, of all the aspects of the hospital, not only the toilets, but uh, the seats where the patients are sitting, the bathrooms, the beds, door knobs, etc. has to be uh, taken uh, properly. And the, other, the third aspect that we need to discuss uh, with our staff are what are the probable scenarios that can arise during this period. A uh, patient uh, can come without an attendant, a problematic patient may be coming, or a patient may be requiring more support by travel or something, or what happens when a patient is collapsing within the hospital or such type of different scenarios. We need to thought uh, make a thought process of this one and how we need to react to each and every scenario has to be uh, has to be made clear cut and to be discussed with the patients and obviously during these times we will be requiring we will be requiring more coordinators uh, yeah uh, probably getting voice of someone else yeah okay just need to play the Okay, sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. There should be more coordinators, and uh, yes, uh, we have to uh, differentiate at different uh, things by mainly by time rather than the space, particularly in the OPDs, rather than spreading the patients at different different places. I think it's better to spread them by time rather than primarily and secondarily by place. And more innovations are in waiting. Once we involve our staff, they will be coming with so many new, new ideas, what to do at different aspects. A few of uh, the things that I'm uh, sharing with you people, one thing which is common in most of the hospitals is taking the attendance by using the fingerprint sensors, which are again, the potency of uh, spreading. So after using this one or prior to using this one, always using an alcohol based sanitizer should be implemented. Opening of the doors, what, uh, what should be the protocols, whether they have to be some sensors which open by themselves or should we keep them completely open or are there any means by which we can open it by using other parts of the body has to be uh, seen uh, depending upon each and every hospital and uh, uh, a thought has to be given to them uh, that one. 
during phlebotomy, like we used to uh, go to movies to take the tickets, uh, can such a thing can be implemented wherein the patient can give his hand and the phlebotomist on the other side of the screen of the uh, of the glass can take the blood sample uh, from from the cubital fossa has to be explored. The pharmacy, instead of explaining to the patient uh, physically what medicines has to be taken at what time, morning, evening, et cetera, et cetera, such type of boxes or such type of simple uh, brown covers, like one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the night, uh, the different medicines can be kept into that one and can be handed to them. And they have to be constantly counseled by keeping so many uh, counselors or a, a, a very good uh, virtual counseling team or a counselor should be there who should be explaining to the all the patients because we need to see the here get the physical communication between the staff orders and the patients is is going to come down during this period so which has to be compensated by virtual counseling if not by the doctor then there should be an equity trained staff who should be fully trying to fill up this gap and particularly uh, sharing of the pens is quite common uh, uh, in the staff which should be avoided so everyone should have their own particular uh, pens and as we discussed previously uh, different accessories both for the male doctors as well as the female doctors should be as much limited as possible uh, while in the hospital. Coming to the phones there can be multiple policies but I suggest that uh, most of the like in the IT companies uh, most of the phones should not be uh, allowed uh, to the hospital once they come to the hospital they have to be uh, deposited somewhere or kept within the locker and a common number should be should be shared uh, with the family members so that if some emergency is there, they can see it because of uh, the presence of phone and the social media, most of us have the habit of going to our uh, social media or WhatsApp and looking it whenever we are free. So it's better if the uh, smartphones are kept while coming to the hospital and uh, while going out, if they are taken, that is good. And whatever the emergency comes, someone will be there to communicate to us if it comes from our family. The second thing is in the hospitals, in particularly in the wards, it's always better to use the phones rather than using uh, the receiver at the ear as well as the mouthpiece. It's always better to install the phones with the speaker, which can be easily sanitized. So each and every time, uh, whenever a call comes, they can see from which ward the wall is coming. And uh, by sanitizing this one and opening the speaker, they will be able to listen as well as communicate, by which uh, the chances of infection will be much lower. The same is again the canteen rather than giving the time period of one to two for the lunch, we can break it uh, by time okay, by one group can go somewhere from 11 o'clock till 3, 3.30. We can group this one and we need to rearrange our canteens so that uh, while sitting the distance, social distance or the physical distance is maintained and uh, the time can also be split, uh, split uh, of one staff going to the other staff. Yeah, mainly the money transaction has to be mostly in the digital platforms. If you are using some type of uh, card uh, swipe, these things uh, has to be regularly sanitized. Uh, there should be a protocol of how money has to be taken because while counting money, it's a common habit for most of us uh, to use the saliva to count the money, which is again a potentially risky thing. So a clear cut protocol of how to take the money and where to keep the money and when to reuse it has to be in place uh, within the hospitals. Yeah, as, uh, as uh, we know that coronavirus doesn't differentiate between a poor person or a rich person, it can infect both the poor person and the rich person and younger people and adult people. In the same way, in the hospital, we should also uh, should not try to differentiate between uh, the doctors or the high-end consultants versus the other staffs like a janitor or a, or a security person. Whatever the pro appropriate uh, uh, whatever the appropriate uh, PPE is there, we should ensure that the, all of our uh, staff should be getting an adequate PPE. And during these times, uh, most of some of the staff may have significant fear. We need to communicate with them, give some support psychologically, and some of them will be requiring even the financial support. We should be there to help them out in our uh, hospital or clinic setups. And uh, some of the pay, uh, some of our staff members may be so frightened that they may, they, they may prefer not to work. In such a scenario, we should give the choice to them uh, to take a break for some time, but we have to support them both psychologically as well as financially whenever it arises. So guiding them, assisting, advising, supporting, and help is the other leadership uh, role that all the doctors uh, should take apart from our routine clinical practice. So the difference between a boss and a leader, as we know that boss is generally the orders to do this one and that one, 
rather than that one, we should be at the forefront and showing them the way that how we need to manage the patients. And uh, this is a adequate time wherein we, 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 we try to show our leadership skills. As was said by one of the very famous uh, entrepreneur, Mr. Richard Brandon, sir, I truly believe that if you take care of your employees, they will take care of your business. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kalik. Uh, so uh, it's a wonderful session we had and very insightful. Uh, so now I uh, invite Dr. Chalapati for uh, structural changes in clinic and hospital. So what's happening is it's like a warlike situation. So Donald Trump tells it is a war, Dr. PM Modi tells it is a war. So we need to change a lot of things. Uh, till now, what we is doing and post-COVID is going to be a very different thing. And uh, Dr. Ch I invite Dr. Chalapati to talk about what are the structural changes required in a simple clinic or a big hospital to fight this. Please, Dr. Chalapati. Can you add the share feature, please? Yeah, yeah uh, that it's, that's indeed a very insightful talk, uh, Dr. Khalik. Uh, so I'm going to uh, talk about uh, what kind of uh, structural changes uh, are suggestible in clinics and hospitals. So there are various clinicians uh, who work in individual clinic and also who work in uh, nursing homes and corporate hospitals. So <clears throat> it may not be an individual decision, uh, but it, it is a collective decision between uh, yourself with the management and admin. And it may involve a lot of cost, uh, uh, but sometimes it may have to be done to control the infections and protect everybody. Uh, there are no specific guidelines, but it uh, again generally goes with the general practice of infection control, social distancing and minimizing the infection. So before going that, I want to give, bring you a few facts about the Indian uh, scenario. So you know the, uh, the most uh, uh, contagious problems, the most communicable problems are pneumonia, acute respiratory infections and the acute diarrheal infections. Uh, which constitute almost 75% uh, of uh, cases is as per 2018 data. So they are the deadliest communicable diseases. And uh, coming to the various countries where uh, uh, the deaths are because of contagious diseases, the highest is South Africa, Pakistan, and India. So uh, we do suffer with a lot of contagious diseases, and we should understand that. Uh, and we all know that COVID-19 is a very contagious disease. And... Uh, uh, this is one of the census as per uh, global health security rank uh, uh, out of 195 countries. Sorry. Uh, just yeah. So India uh, ranks 57. So the higher the rank, uh, it is the uh, more likelihood that we can suffer with a lot of epidemics. And the lesser the score, again, we are uh, more uh, prone for epidemics. So India is more vulnerable to epidemics compared to even China and Italy also. Uh, but we should understand that China and Italy are one of the most affected countries. So we are still uh, doing better because of the current lockdown and the uh, current uh, policies that the government has imposed. So this was as per the data in the uh, two years back. So what is happening to the healthcare budgeting in India? So uh, government is spending on healthcare is the lowest compared to the peer and advanced economies. It is even, uh, uh, you know, uh, lesser than Mexico and uh, small countries like Turkey. And uh, the other uh, problem is, uh, other problem is we spend very less on preventive care. That is only 6.8 compared to curative care. So we spend a lot on curative care, uh, writing medications, doing surgeries and other stuff. But we, uh, you know, uh, tend to ignore the uh, aspect of preventive care. So what we are discussing today in this webinar is about preventive care uh, so that uh, uh, we can protect ourselves and also our staff and also our hospital, our nursing home, our clinic, as well as our patients. So it is very important. And aptly it was said in that one of the article that we need a reboot of healthcare in uh, India because uh, we need to uh, address all these issues. So uh, one of the issues that we, we have to consider is structural changes in hospitals and clinics. 
what is the current challenge so from next week most of us uh, will be starting to work more uh, frequently for longer hours so we need to have we have three challenges so what about covid patients how to triage them how to identify the cases and allocate the treatment and it's more important as cases increase we have to match the burden of this disease and it is also important to allocate the treatment for non covid emergencies especially like myocardial infarction cerebrovascular accidents other causes of pneumonia pancreatitis gi bleed poisoning etc uh, in the same emergency of the same hospital which must have been designated as covid 19 hospital and also it is important to allocate our treatment facilities for other routine care either it is a first uh, follow first visit patient or follow up visit patient so these are the challenges that we are going to face from next week when we start working for longer hours so right at the entrance itself it is always a good idea to uh, uh, at uh, uh, establish a screening opd like a respiratory screening opd like any patient who has the symptoms they are voluntarily advised to visit this clinic and uh, uh, staff are allocated there with full personal protective equipment and they can screen and uh, this is one of the important change that we need to do and at the security level itself as i have mentioned in my uh, previous presentation uh, there need to be an infrared uh, thermal scanner so that body temperature you can be checked for each and every patient as well as relatives so these are the two things uh, that needs to be done at the entrance of the hospital itself so one of the um, thing that we are following at uh, our hospital is these kind of kiosk counters to screen these patients uh, uh at the entrance level itself so uh, some kind of physical barrier uh, will be there and uh, some two holes will be there here where uh, two hands can be brought out and patient can be examined and patient can be questioned there can be mic inside and outside like in our uh, uh, box office uh, ticket counters uh, and uh, it is a good idea to follow a protocol to have a, to do a mandatory chest x ray for each and every patient especially those with respiratory symptoms so that uh, we know that certain patients can be asymptomatic or with predominant gi symptoms and they can still have abnormal chest x ray so that we can triage this patient so uh, putting up these kind of kiosks here will also protect the patients as well as the staff from getting in direct contact with the uh, covid 19 suspect patients so when the patient comes to the front office uh it is always uh, uh, uh practice that patients tend to crowd around the front office so uh it is always a good practice that uh, you encourage the staff to call the patient uh, one day prior uh, and um, uh, appoint them and give them appointments and at the same go they can actually inquire if they have covid related symptoms and uh, it is important to call the patient one by one only and to avoid crowding at the front office reception the front office manager of course should be protected with full gear ppe and it is important to actually uh, monitor that they maintain the adequate distance between person to person so i am keeping this hand sanitizer uh, picture in every slide because that is the most important and may, apart from social distancing so a practice like this thing uh, will be good uh, assigning some kind of circles so that uh, uh patients can maintain adequate distance the re minimum recommended is around 2 meters in fact so longer uh, distance circles can be maintained uh we have seen this in our newspapers where actually police have marked for vegetable markets where they are advising the uh, uh customers to stand in that row uh, to actually uh, purchase their vegetables in the vegetable markets and grocery stores so we same thing can be practiced at the front office also so that uh, a discipline can be maintained and uh, distance can also be maintained so same thing uh, can be actually uh, seen at the pharmacy also we can and lab where we can um, use a kind of counter uh, wherein uh, uh, there will be a, a physical barrier a transparent physical barrier between the uh, patient and the pharmacy staff and medicines can be dispensed through a hole or a small uh, aperture kind of thing so these things are very important these uh, and uh, what about entrance door so dr khalik has uh, 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 shown up uh, presented a very interesting cartoon so it is a common practice that we barge and bang on the doors uh, with our hands and legs uh, but it is a good idea that we can shift to swing type of doors where we can just use our back or hip or kind of elbow or it is always even better if we have automated sensor doors wherein they open and close when you send when they sense the incoming and outgoing of any patient or person
So it's always better to have uh, automated entrance, but it may not be possible outside your OPD chambers uh, where there will be a lock, where there will be a knob uh, like that. In that case, uh, it is advised to uh, have uh, uh, patients to wear a gloves or push it with uh, elbow or uh, shoulder or in fact your back. So that is always better. And it is always important uh, at regular areas uh, outside every room or every uh, six to eight feet, it is always important to install these kind of wall mounted uh, sanitizers. Uh, we always uh, see these kind of sanitizers at the bedside of every patient uh, in the ICU or in the general ward also. But it is also important to have uh, this kind of practice uh, of wall mounted sanitizer so that whenever if somebody has forgotten to uh, wash their hands, it is always important that these, if they are installed, they remind uh, the uh, consultant or the paramedical staff to wash the hands periodically. Uh, establishing signboards is very important. Uh, this is uh, very important to actually differentiate between a COVID ward and the non-COVID area isolation wards it is uh, it gives good signages uh, it can stop the number of visitors it can stop the number of uh, unauthorized personnel entering into the hospital and it can actually uh, 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 demarcate the areas of uh, uh, patients with covid and without covid also certain help desks also help uh, we can uh, uh, put kind of standees with educational material uh, regarding coronavirus infection and also um, uh, which can, patients can read that and at least they can get educated then and there itself. And if there is any doubt, they can uh, go to the help desk also. <clears throat> Patient spacing, we discussed about uh, doing our OPDs uh, when we are in hospital, but what to do uh, for these patients when they're actually waiting. So encourage the patient to talk, uh, to take prior appointments so that uh, there will be adequate temporal spacing. So it is, uh, as Dr. Khalik told, uh, there should not be a policy of get, set, go for the consultant as well as for the patient. So uh, it is always better to encourage to have some a gap of 30 minutes for each patient or at least 20 minutes for each patient. So if there is a spillover, that uh, margin of temp uh, uh, time is allowed. And uh, this would avoid overcrowding. And uh, we know that overcrowding even in hospital is a big risk factor for spread of this infection. So ensure uh, each patient sits in every third or fourth chair in the uh, OPD waiting hall that may actually give a, a distance of six to eight feet so that there is an adequate distance and also mark the OP floor as I've uh, uh, previously described uh, with some tapes or kind of paint around uh, one to two meter each and install stoppers also uh, so that uh, patient follows a line and uh, this would maintain adequate spacing and this would also remind the patient of the rules and the precautions. So this is the kind of thing. Uh, I borrowed this slide from my uh, uh, dear colleague, Dr. Uh, Sridhar from Guntur, who is uh, following this kind of thing on the right side of the screen. You can see that how patients are uh, sitting in a disciplined way and they move uh, uh, chair by chair uh, whenever they, their turn comes. So uh, one or two chairs, uh, leaving one or two chairs are uh, is adequate. And sometimes if, the, if in COVID ward or if you're... Uh, there is a chance of mix up, then it is always better to maintain a longer distance also, at least two meters like that. <clears throat> so in chamber, uh, uh, what to do? So a patient should be allowed inside with only one caretaker inside the chamber uh, who is more and most responsible, who can understand you, who can listen to you and you can counsel them in one go. And uh, it is always important and a good idea to remove the patient's stool. Commonly, two relatives will sit in front of you and one relative one, and the patient is going to sit beside you uh, in the patient's stool. So it is always better to remove that stool because he is the most uh, uh, important suspect of any kind of disease. So I encourage only one relative and the patient should sit beside them in adequate distance and from them, from between themselves as well as from you also on the opposite side of the uh, uh, of your consulting table. So maintain at least six to eight feet difference, uh, distance between each other. So <clears throat> don't be over enthusiastic while you're consulting. It is very important uh, uh, to counsel the patients, but we have common practices that we start uh, drawing pictures. We uh, take up our iPad and draw pictures and explain the patient uh, moving very close to them. But uh, in this uh, uh, period, please avoid that let the patient only remain on the opposite side and you remain the other, on the other side and turn around your computer uh, if possible and then start explaining to them. 
uh obviously indians are very uh, uh, you know famous for desi jugad uh, these kind of screens were uh, established in one of the clinic shared through whatsapp group some kind of physical polythene barrier was uh, installed and uh, doctor physician was uh, observe uh, was examining uh, the patient on the opposite side so that may um, uh, prevent uh, physical aerosol but uh, the problem here is the doctor is not wearing any mask uh, so please excuse me for that on his behalf <clears throat> so the uh, so this is the practice in opd room uh, uh, when you are touching an abdomen or doing uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, physical uh, examination on the other parts of the body so please be careful uh, to wear outer gloves as i told you and same practices should be followed so coming to the near the theater area surgeon and staff changing rooms are very important please make sure that only one surgeon or staff is present in one room and uh, when you are donning and doffing it is very important to follow the protocols and more importantly there should be two chairs while you are doffing as per cdc guidelines one a clean chair and another a dirty chair so once you are uh, coming out of the patient care you have to sit in the dirty chair uh, make sure that you actually remove everything and uh, sanitize yourself uh, remove the ppe and then move on to the clean chair so it is very important not to mix it up <clears throat> and of course in the ot's negative pressure laminar flow rooms uh, majority of the ot's uh, have this so i need not emphasize on that there may not be much of uh, things need to be changed in this changed in this area uh, in the scrub area in the wash area it is always better to have leg controls or automated sensors and avoid contact with hands and fingers and uh, i'm sure my surgical colleagues uh, will be following all these things regarding doors again ot doors there are many kinds of ot doors but it is always better to have a kind of uh, uh, sensor like if you see in this uh, area on the right side of the lo uh, slide lowermost corner this is the uh, leg sensor so you can just raise your leg in front of this sensor and automatically there is door opens and closes rather than this kind of thing where you need to actually barge inside where by pushing it which is not recommended most importantly our critical care colleagues anesthesia colleagues uh, they have the habit uh, of actually uh, leaning forward and doing intubation and patient uh, uh, may be coughing and though how much so ever you are protected with the personal protective equipment you can still have this risk of exposure and as shown in one of the recent nejm uh, paper that um, uh, using ultraviolet rays a uh, fluorescent dye is uh, put up in the simulator and a cough simulation was made and when the mannequin cuffs uh, the 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 doctor is filled up with entire these kind of droplets and these are potential aerosols that can infect you so this practice is very bad so please avoid all these things a simple modification is this kind of uh, box made with acrylic of this kind of measurement 62 into 47 with two holes and the performer will actually wear full ppe and the patient will be inside this box right from the mid chest till few centimeters away from the uh, head level and through these two hands all the anesthesia equipment the intubation equipment can be actually um, um, managed and patient can be intubated safely so this is actually published this is called barrier enclosure and there are various modifications that have been coming up in the whatsapp so uh, you may take up any of those things so inside the or this is one of my dear colleague uh, and colleague surgeon who is doing and uh, he is with full personal protective equipment you can see that there is no skin exposed to any of the free air both of them and there will be minimal staffing so please provide uh, ensure that uh, there will be full personal protective equipment uh, in the ot and uh, there is minimal staff but you should ensure that there is maximum patient safety uh, and also you should protect yourself maximum so my colleagues uh, and myself started using this kind of uh, face shields to actually prevent uh, the uh, direct aerosol contact when you are doing some kind of endoscopies or when you are intubating so it is always encouraged to have these uh, kind of stuff so coming to the endoscopy suites uh, this is one of, from one of the uh, presentations from professor gs raju so if you are bound to do an endoscopy for a covid positive patient you should anticipate it so it is always better to design designate this area as covid negative or positive at the reception area as well as the preparation area as well as in the endoscopy rooms including the changing rooms and immediately all the equipment should go into the soiled scope uh, soil scope clean for cleaning and disinfecting so it is always better to demarcate these areas 
so uh, physically also so that there will not be any mix up as you are doing it in the uh, wards also so importantly uh, about the icus uh, there will be uh, most of the corporate hospitals will have multiple icus in multiple floors like uh, surgical icu is next to the uh, surgical floor that is the ot's and medical icu is next to the uh, in the first floor like that so multiple icus are there so you can designate them as covid icus and non covid icus separately it is just a matter of identification and redistributing them and similar practices need to be followed even in the accident and emergency department that is casualties or emergency rooms so it's very important to avoid these mix ups and as i showed uh, signage boards are very important and uh, there should be separate hospital entrances as released by one of the gos from uh, um, uh, Uh, Andhra Pradesh. They have suggested to have separate uh, hospital entrances and floors can be identified for uh, other admitted patients. Like first floor is for this patient category of patients, second floor is for this category of patients, so that there will not be any mix up in this in these uh, wards. And washrooms. Very importantly, uh, majority of hospitals have these kind of washrooms where people uh, uh, go chit chatting, and uh, uh, it's a common practice. And sometimes see, there may be one toilet, and a uh, lot of people will be waiting in the queue. So we should not ignore this area because uh, there can be uh, even virus shedding is noted in the feces, and there can be aerosol spread through the toilets also. So it is always uh, better if you have these kind of things uh, to actually uh, use. alternate toilets alternate uh, urinals so that uh, the uh, alternate urinals can be used so that physical and social distancing can be maintained or it is best to actually uh, use a single toilet and uh, promote and uh, encourage people using only those toilets rather than the uh, in a group and obviously if you have if you can't manage anything please ask your security to be more polite at the uh, wash areas and ask them to control the crowd uh not to uh, forget about the patient waiting areas especially in the uh, ip uh, when the patient waiting areas especially in the uh, icu icu patients if they are waiting for the relatives are waiting outside there should not be any mix up there should not be any mix up at the laundry again assign separate uh, uh, machines and launderers for that washrooms we have discussed especially the biomedical waste management services you have to see that uh, there is no mix up uh, at the sewage level and canteen dr khalik has discussed and maintain adequate staffing for each and every area and also it is important to have good quarantine facilities even for your own healthcare staff like in our hospital and majority of the hospitals they have uh, separate hostels for the nursing staff and other uh, staff and they maintain some kind of uh, um um uh, rooms or kind of guest houses around the hospital so that if uh, a page if a doctor needs some kind of rest or need to quarantine himself they need not go to the hospital they need not go to the uh, their house and they can use these kind of things so it's always a good idea to provide uh, quarantine facilities for your healthcare staff as well and obviously we should understand that it is not responsibility of uh, prime minister it's not responsibility of a single drug it is responsibility for all of us to actually uh, stop this coronavirus and deal with this difficult times thank you so much for your patient listening uh thank you very much uh, chelapati uh before going to question and answer uh, question and answer session i would like to uh, congratulate and thank the speakers for their extensive research they have done for this uh, to, uh, webinar and uh, many of us uh, may be thinking that uh, we are immune to covid 19 because we have mbbs degree or something like that so that is not correct <laughs> because uh, around 500 doctors worldwide have died because of covid 19 as of now around 42000 of healthcare workers are infected with covid 19 so it's very uh, common uh, uh, infectious disease and uh, we should take care as the uh, speaker told us to do so now i invite the questions first i will invite uh, uh, some uh, somebody with login name of phoenix phoenix you can unmute and ask your question phoenix uh, this is a login name okay so uh, uh, probably some connectivity issue there i'll go to the questions asked by our uh, uh youtube viewers uh, with uh, mr arjun is asked about money transaction what about money transaction probably dr ahmed uh, 
uh, covered the topic you want to tell in very quick uh, this thing yeah yeah most of the money that should be uh, done the transaction uh, transaction between the patients and the hospital or the clinics should be primarily through a digital platform there are so many uh, wallets are present as well as google pay paytm etc as there preferably we should insist to our patients to pay the money uh, through digital platform the second preferable is using a card and swipe but uh, in india though we push for uh, digital uh, payment still there may be some amount of uh, some people who will prefer to pay money through the cash itself while taking the cash it, it uh, the person who is uh, in charge of taking the cash the cashier dedicated cashier or a person in the front office person they should be wearing an extra gloves uh, and they should be dedicated only for uh, taking the money they should not be allowed to touch the phones etc 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 and once they take in the money they have to keep it in a separate box and as we know that uh, the virus can stay for a few days some uh, report says that it stays for 3 to 4 days on a paper and some reports say that it can stay up to 9 to 10 days whatever the money is uh, collected once the counting is done that money should not be reused again for at least 10 days after 10 days that money can be used for a uh, for a circulation point of view yeah okay now i allow dr srinagesh to ask the question srinagesh you can unmute and ask your question uh, hi friends i just got one question yeah uh, one minute i had one query about your money usually people are saying it's only for 24 hours mm -hmm. the money part is only for 24 hours and you are telling mm -hmm. me that it's for 10 days Mm -hmm. so some uh, some reports have come that on a paper it stays for 3 uh, to 4 days there's one more report mm -hmm. which says that it is going to stay for around 7 to 9 days okay. so we don't know for how long it is there so it's always better keep okay, once we take it uh, the cash uh, yes. seal the box off and reuse it uh, after 10 days preferably <laughs> after keeping in the sunlight yeah that that is a very good idea <laughs> right okay thank you dr nagesh i invite uh, kim to ask question i kim you can unmute and ask your question yeah please go ahead dr sakesh national runs from tirupati why can't we take a complete history through phone and review the patient's reports and everything through whatsapp so that we can minimize the uh, contact with the patient so yeah. whatever required physical examination can be completed and history will take through phone Why can't we do like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, doctor. That is one of the very good suggestion. Actually, we are planning to do one more follow-up session in the next week, first uh, part of the uh, next week, wherein we are trying to see that how this uh, digital technology, whether they be app, apps or web-based or WhatsApp or Google Do or whatever, how can we use it to complement to our practice. wherein our um, uh, type of uh, clinical care that we are giving is not compromised so we will be coming forth uh, with uh, this uh, concept and will be taking your inputs also to how better to use uh, these digital platforms and what are the different platforms and we will try to assess them uh, and uh, go slightly into the depth uh, me and chelpati are planning to do it in the first week of the next week uh, first half of the next week thank you thank you uh, I know hello uh, Umda Healthcare representative to speak ask a question please Yeah I can unmute and speak Okay Yeah ask hello. a question please yeah. Hello my question is how about making now the emergency cases we will allow all the non emergency cases we who come for follow up how about uh, keeping some IT personals who will put all their old record important record into digitalize them if we should make the for the follow up cases at least paperless yes number one this was my first question the second question is how about uh, you know the patients who come they should not be allowed to carry fomites with them and they carry bags uh, so many records so x rays all those things they should be allowed to keep them at the uh, entrance and their hands should be sanitized this sanitizer you know the security person i have seen the uh, supermarkets there they spray on the hands they just rub it as if it's a scent 
something like a scent or something they are not rubbing it so most of the people do not know how to use the sanitizer sanitizer has to be rubbed uh, nicely into the creases and the nail bed and everywhere that's not being followed they are thinking that when that uh, chemical is sprayed on your hands it's enough everything is killed no it's not like that so one thing is this so how about is there any substitute which can usually be more stronger can we ki ask them to dip their hands like that you know in old days when i used to study in usman i used to have two bowls you know uh, with a towel you know one mm-hmm. used to have towel water another used to clean water we used to dip our hands in the towel water take out our hands and then dip it into the other hand such things can be kept and frequently changed so that the people rub their hands in that and come what is the efficacy of this thing compared to this uh, not properly used sanitizer thank you will you yeah. give me a clear picture about this i'll be happy yeah sir regarding uh, the first part of the question so if uh, practically i want to say we 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 also run an uh, healthcare it company and we have our application uh, what i practically am planning to do at this point of time is uh, we have a uh, citizen certification wherein they can upload the reports which i can, i will be able to see it digitally or if we don't have the application the simple thing is before the patients uh, come to the hospital we should encourage them that they should call to the hospital and take a prior appointment once prior appointment is taken the second aspect that our staff should give to the patient and their attendants are please upload all your old relevant uh, uh, records whether it be previous prescriptions or previous reports including the medicines uh the pictures of the medicines has to be taken a picture and sent on a whatsapp so that our staff will uh, forward it to us so whenever the patient comes we go uh, we open our uh, maybe our uh, laptop or our tablet and see into the reports of the patients rather than touching all the all the reports which they are carrying which may uh, have the chances of formats Uh, the second aspect uh, sir as you suggested uh, one thing that is pres- that is present in the disney world is also that there are have a large um, um, uh, maybe a uh, watch uh, washing machine wash machine like uh, uh, things are there in which both hands can be dipped and alcohol based diluted solutions are present in which the kids will keep their hands there wash it and they will bring it out as you suggested in the previous uh, era there used to be two uh, uh, two balls used to be there one one was with the detol or the savlan and there was a clean thing uh, but yeah sir uh, this can be used but if we are if we are seeing more number of patients right uh, we need to balance uh, de- depending upon our comfortability by keeping our hands and washing it repeatedly within uh, such type of a disinfecting solution is better or using some uh, some uh, uh, gloves as suggested by chalpati which can be thrown taken at out and thrown after each and every patient is that depends upon one's own preferences we can stick on to any of the things so chalpati you want to add anything yeah that's okay yeah fine i think practicing uh, inner and outer gloves is uh, also important but uh, even we have to sanitize those inner gloves also each time because you will be handling your pens and papers when you are wearing your inner gloves when once you are off uh, out of uh, you know once you have one you once you start writing the prescription and all Uh, you will remove the outer gloves and start using it still we have to sanitize so as of now as you told i think uh, alcohol based sanitizers uh, are better yeah okay uh, dr srinagesh you want to ask any question yeah i've got one query about uh, am i audible now yes yes yeah. nagesh yeah. yeah i've got one query about the medical legal implications of patients not sticking to the safe distancing guidelines if somebody doesn't do it are we well within our rights to refuse to see the patient if it yes. doesn't comply with the clinic yes i think as i told you in my first presentation we created a informed consent and patient yeah. checklist wherein actually oh. patient has to sign and uh, there is a compliance form also that they will be adhering to the adhering to the social distancing guidelines and all so in fact yeah. uh, one of my colleagues actually, actually uh, refused to see the patient in fact uh, we should all do that yeah. if patient is not ready to sign it up yeah, or if they don't that's a big uh, problem nowadays yeah, yeah 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 true 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 that that's true you have every right to reject the patient yeah so i invite the one plus to ask the question uh, the login id one plus hello yeah please go ahead yeah just small a notice to you you notice just you mentioned about dr sitra's op 
while mm-hmm. arranging the chains and moving from one chain to another chain mm. that also not practicable because we are shifting to the one patient to another patient position true true i agree it has to come from the one to the directly to the examination chair before uh, after getting sanitized the that chair also yeah yeah we should we should practice. that's not a good practice so that's why actually practicing in a common room is also not good shifting chairs is also not good yes, yes, and yes. whenever we see actually a mix up of all these things we need to still, uh, you know disinfect everything disinfect yes, i agree Yes, okay. yes, I agree. I agree. Yes, sir. Agree. I, sir, ideally, separating uh, patients rather than in space, it, I think it is more better to separate them by time. Say, if yeah. my time of uh, consultation with each uh, and every patient is say, by around ten minutes, it's better to by I separate uh, giving one appointment to the second appointment by twenty or twenty-five minutes or thirty minutes, so that uh, the crowding within the waiting area will be bare. Yeah. Uh, okay, Dr. Kali, some uh, YouTube uh, viewers uh, uh, is asking that uh, some of the clinics are very small, where there is no scope of having a separate OP for general and uh, COVID suspected patients. What to do in such situation? Separating by time. Separating by time. Okay. Separating by time and going to digital platform for follow-up cases. Okay. Uh, any uh, Arjun from YouTube is asking any problem with usage of AC? What kind of AC? Centralized AC, window AC? What kind of AC is suitable? Air conditioning. Sorry, sorry, I did condition here. Air conditioning. Air conditioning in OPD or hospital or clinics is it advisable or what? Or what kind of uh, air conditioning is better? Centralized AC or uh, so do you want to take? uh i think there are some concerns about uh, you know uh, sucking up air and all but it is always better to have uh, you know if if you are uh, following the other strict protocols to screen the covid patients uh, or from non covid patients to separate them and all uh, you can as well use the your regular air conditioners because it may be difficult to change everything including the air conditioners some of the hospitals may be having central air conditioners so it is it may be difficult so all of a sudden if you uh, ask the hospital to change to a negative suction area negative mm-hmm. suction room it may be difficult so if you follow the protocols of uh, checklist uh, you know the uh, triaging and all probably you are separating majority of or all of the patients from your opd uh, so that uh, you are not at risk but if you have an option to uh, do that in your clinic uh, probably you can shift on to a negative suction area okay and uh, quite a few attendees are telling uh, the extensive information you people have given but they are feeling it is difficult to implement what are your comments so th- it's it's just uh, a thought process which we can we have to implement so depending uh, it, it, the practicing places will vary depending upon a small clinics with a single room to a larger corporate hospital or a larger institutes so depending upon uh, see one thing is clear that we are at midst of a storm of a covid-19 pandemic right we have to get prepared for ourselves so uh, yeah as much as possible implementation here is not a choice but it is mandatory right for for the things which are required to protect ourselves our staff etc is not a thing of choice but it is mandatory uh, akim uh, dr akim if you have any questions you can ask No, thank you sir thank you what is that image no 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 it's not but the chalpati that is your image which one no no, no. no, no. Uh, dr akim kartik okay okay Yeah, actually, majority of uh, uh, whatever we have uh, spoken is uh, uh, may not be in the literature, except uh, very few. But it uh, actually follows the general guidelines and our uh, uh, learnings of uh, infection control and uh, uh, protocols to prevent infection and sepsis. but it uh, actually follows the general guidelines and our uh, learnings of uh, infection control and uh, protocols to prevent infection and sepsis right okay. dr shrinagesh if i have one question no no not right now yeah. Yeah. but the problem is in busy uh, practice uh, 
we tend to forget majority of the things so um, if we actually uh, uh, get some information through this webinar we practice some certain kind of things at least uh, we can uh, you know it's like a brush up it's like a brush up uh kalik uh, you have yeah. uh, uh, listen uh, you have answered some of the questions which is put forth in the question and answer section yeah yes if we can uh, tell the answer to the general latency also for if any interesting question been asked yes uh one thing uh, uh, dr uh, mohan patro has asked that doctors above 65 years have to attend the hospital at least twice in a week rarely comes in contact with non covid patients what precautions we should take with our family members uh, so good evening uh, one thing is uh, as uh, i discussed it's always better rather than working twice a week or thrice a week it's better to divide into 15 days slot uh, the reason being that if uh, one uh, one half of the team get quarantined the other half can take care of the uh, clinical work so that the hospital and the department can keep running second thing is uh, with, without extensive testing all our potential contacts the patients who are for us for follow up or uh, each and every including our staff members are potential uh, coronavirus infection patients so we can't say that these people are corona positive and these people are not Correct. corona positive in spite of uh, having uh, down the line we may be getting uh, very uh, clearly the antibody testing thing but still for the antibody to come positive it will take at least four days to one week of time so with sure we can't say that this patient is a corona positive or a corona not positive our attitude and mindset should be with each and every interaction that we are having, happening we are uh, our interaction is happening we have to consider them as a corona positive patient and has to take our due precautions what things we have to do with our family members first thing is sir as i suggested once coming to home we have to uh, remove our clothes we have to keep our uh, shoes outside take a shower and only then uh, come out and uh, meet with the family it's always better to maintain the physical distance with the family members particularly with the elders if they are uh, at home uh, and a uh, third thing is whenever uh, if at least the smallest tinge of any uh, symptoms are there uh, we should not be over confident that it is a simple so throat or a simple headache because of sleeplessness etc etc so we should uh, we should be getting ourselves uh, tested uh, for that one and what uh, extra precautions we should take social distancing is one thing second thing is sir our our uh, maybe our plates and drinking glasses should be different uh, from uh from uh, should be labeled and should be different when uh, and we should be using our own utensils of uh, eating uh, and drinking water and if there are multiple uh, bathrooms are there it's always better that the people who go to the hospital they use a separate bathroom when compared to the other family members okay uh, mr pandran krishna you want to ask some question dr pondri kaksha yeah Sir, uh, myself, uh, after having had all the discussions that are uh, discussed here at the last one and a half year hours, how far it is uh, practicable in our uh, setup? Sir, this was only an overview by keeping in mind right from a smaller clinic to a bigger hospital. So one thing we should be very clear that we have to be much much extra cautious than what uh, we used to practice. Our practice is going to be completely different for at least next six months. And depending upon our uh, setup, whether a small clinic or this thing, what are the what are all the things that we need to implement? so that uh, we can reduce the infection say in a bigger corporate hospital they can keep in uh, 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 they can keep in a sensor based hand wash right at the entrance but in a small clinic we can keep a simple wash basin and train one of the staff member that whenever a patient comes we need to uh, we need to ask them to wash their hands thoroughly uh, and showing them exactly how to wash their hands and then send it so depending upon our setups we we, we need to uh, Uh, we need to innovate or we need to change them accordingly this is not that everything fits for each and every clinic depending upon that one we should take care that all the patients who enter us are entering after a thorough washing of the hands with the soap or by using a proper sanitization uh, sanitizer and washing their hands we should be advising them to come in only with the mask 
with limited number of uh, attendants, as Shilpati was saying, and we should emphasize that they should not touch anything. We should make our protocol so that the patients doesn't wait for a longer period of time. The minimal contact or a no touch policy should be there as much as possible from the clinician's point of view. Maximum report should be uh, should be seen on a digital platform through WhatsApp or, or a web based thing. And when examination has to be uh, done, a due precaution should be done as if the patient is a um, corona positive patient and then uh, proceed. So depending, uh, these are the few basics that we need to keep in mind. And depending upon the size of the room in which we are practicing, the type of the clinic or the practice things, we need to uh, we need to innovate ourselves and see that each, at each and every step, right from the patient coming to the clinic and leaving the clinic, or coming to the hospital and leaving the hospital, whether OPD or an IPD or a procedure, we we need to see what are the different places where the chances of infection are there, what better we can do. So we have to work into this one, sir, and try to implement. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Karlik. It is a uh, very valid question because many of the small clinics people think in such a way and is a very detailed answer, like a concluding remark as well. So with this, uh, I would like to end the session uh, uh, and I thank all the attendees uh, for uh, Shilpati has something to say. Yeah, Shilpati, yeah. please. Sorry, I, I have a question to Dr. Khalik. So, uh, if we, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt. So, if we yeah, yeah. I, I actually remember our olden days, childhood days, we used to live in an independent house, individual house, right? So, we used to have a, a, at least some kind of backyard, and usually our restrooms or washrooms are placed away clear. from our house actually so we used to wash our uh, hands our legs uh, take a bath there itself and then enter the home now yes. we are sh you know living in flats or apartments where there is a mix-up at multiple levels at the parking at the security at the lift or at the staircase and uh, we all i think more than 99 percent or 100 percent of us has uh, actually uh, uh, you know attached bathrooms attached toilets to close to our bedrooms and we have to cross our main hall where kids may be playing we we, we have to you know cross the bedroom and then enter the toilet to uh, follow all these protocols so what is your modification in this current era yeah one one thing as i said first thing is as we come out uh, as i said that um, recently evidence has also come that uh, by from the food souls also this virus can be transmitted that's the reason why i said we have to keep uh, the shoe covers within the car so that we wear the shoe covers go to the hospital with those uh, covers right and from hospital once we come we we take out those shoe covers and keep in the small dustbin which we are keeping within the car right so that, that can be excluded so whatever the shoe is there that is uh, probably uninfected second uh, thing that we are doing is once we come out we are, we are leaving all our uh, footwear outside of the home and coming in Third thing for an extra precaution, if we want to keep, we can keep our own pair of slippers right at the entrance of the uh, home, the main gate, right? Once we enter our uh, our apartment, we, we wear onto that slippers and directly wash it into the uh, bathroom by going through the hall as well as our, uh, our, our bedroom. Third thing is we need to communicate with our elders as well as particularly with the kids because they don't understand once we come home, there are so many kids who come and who have particularly small kids are there. We need to uh, make them understand uh, uh, that our behavior may be changed for a few months and our closeness of the time may be difficult uh, in the coming few months. That we need to communicate with the kids that we should not be touching once we come to the hospital. And once we, uh, this is, these are a few things that can be done after coming back to the home. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, should we take some more questions, colleague? Or... Yeah, yeah. yeah so I think there are a few questions. more questions. I think, yeah, yeah, we'll finish it first. Uh, asked by Uttra Mohan that uh, can we use formalin chambers or UV chambers for patient files, uh, violates mobile? Yeah, UV has formalin. Huh? A formalin UV. chambers. Formalin chambers are not aware, but UV has been shown to be uh, having good, uh, um, uh, say, uh, denaturating agent against this one. This has been proposed for uh, denaturating the uh, virus, particularly on the masks, etc. If the if there is a luxury of having a uh, such type of UV chambers, we can use it. Second thing, but uh, second thing is about the formalin. I am not aware, but one thing that has come about uh, reusing of the N95 masks is one study from Duke uh, University has come, wherein they have aerosolized hydrogen peroxide into small small uh, aerosols, and uh, they were uh, 
these aerosols were given to the mask for a certain period of time after which uh, the mask uh, were uh, were fit to be reused uh, by using the formalin can we make that small size of the aerosols i am not aware uh, of that one if that is the condition we need to look into the literature how effective it is for denaturing the virus and uh, further uh, she adds that uh, patient linen can be eto sterilized patient linen yes can be can be yes patients and one thing that uh, that we proposed uh, previously is there is a lot of uh, hangama about the ppes but uh, one pp that i think is a must is the n95 mask or in a simple word if i want to say going to the hospital or a clinic without n95 mask is as equivalent to going out of the home without clothes hmm. right so that is the importance of a n95 mask the rest of particularly the body uh, the second important thing is we need to have a proper gloves that is the second important pp which is important the third thing is we should have uh, the footwear these three are quintessential the fourth one which is recommended is to cover our head right the fifth one which is recommended is to cover our body as most of the hospitals will have a large surgical gowns which are made up of the linen this can be used because if the virus comes uh, our body or our skin on the exterior doesn't have these ace2 uh, uh, receptors so if at all the patients fomites or secretions or blood spills on our body uh, due to some accident or during some procedure the virus is not going to enter our body right from the skin so the chances of that one are less likely particularly in the opd and less uh, aerosol generating procedures so a simple uh, a simple gown that we commonly used in a surgical uh, procedure with a full hands and a, and a linen based uh, head cover and a good linen based uh, shoe covers can be we can stitch for about three or four sets of this one which once we use it on that day we, we can uh, we can uh, wash them in the hot water dry them and can reuse in that way our spending on the ppe can come down significantly only ppe on which i personally believe that we should spend are n95 masks and second one are the gloves these two non sterile gloves these are the two things on which we need to spend the rest all we can use the cloth based or linen based uh, ppe maybe three sets or four sets or five sets depending upon our practice and uh, wash them and uh, uh, dry them and we can reuse them uh dr milind is asking can government make us to work even if we don't want to work because some may be yes. having uh, some comorbidity or maybe having some uh, maybe the some doctor may be uh, built elderly age group 60 65 if they don't want to work or anybody for that matter don't want to work if it, and the yeah, government there is Yeah. there is one act which is asthma in andhra pradesh uh, chalpati will be in a better <laughs> better uh, position to ask so that one but no one can force anyone to uh, to push to the hospital obviously i i do feel that uh, particularly elderly people uh, elderly doctors or doctors senior doctors or doctors who are having comorbidities uh, like uh, um, diabetes or hypertension which is quite common or uh, people who are having a copd or such type of high risk group of uh, practicing physicians it's always advisable not to venture into uh, to go for a practice uh, Uh, so effluently just to wait and see for under two weeks or four weeks how the rate of infection is going and what actually the data from india is coming how much is the mortality right right and then take a uh, take a guarded uh, way of uh, practicing because we have seen so many of our colleagues uh, uh, at least two colleagues in andhra pradesh uh, have uh, Uh, died because of this uh, corona infection in india also we are seeing that the doctors are dying so it's better maybe we if we are having a bit of comorbidities to at least to wait for two weeks four weeks and see and assess how our how what the data is saying how infectious our um, this type of the virus is present that is present in india and how good our facilities are able to tackle them and then venture into practice uh dr mohammed is asking can n95 be reused yeah yes n95 n95 has to be reused in a country like india 
that we don't have a luxury of not uh, using these respirator for a single time yeah for reusing how many times to reuse one of my uh, one of uh, our uh, colleague has asked we don't have a clear cut uh, uh, idea how many times we need to use but uh, two or three things are there in n95 there are a small small uh, microfibers are there so the more you, the, you use the more efficient it becomes it is not like it will become less efficient because whenever the virus particles comes there are three or four mechanisms by which the virus is obstructed one is the mechanical thing the second one is a stereotactic charging is there there is diffraction so that the virus will get engulfed uh, not only the virus but other uh, particles would get engulfed within these uh, layers of uh, n95 so what happens is once we reuse it repeatedly the chances of breath that there will be much more difficulty in breathing in and breathing out that is the time when uh, we should be actually changing it practically there are two ways of using it if we are having less number of n95 masks uh, there should be at least two so that the uh, once we are using the first one the second one we can we can uh, we can denaturize it by using a microwave method which is well described by steam uh, by steaming uh, this um, outer surface of the n95 by keeping in a microwave for at least a uh, half an hour of uh, time which can be reused the second method which is uh, advised is uh, by keeping the n95 mask aside without using for at least 4 days either keeping within the sunlight or keeping aside and not using it one thing that i suggested is using a tupperware or a or a glass based uh, tiffin box in which we have to take our uh, n95 mask cover it write it okay this is a mask number 1 and if it is placed on the sunlight after 4 days it can be reused as the fifth one these are the two practical ways how a smaller clinics or a smaller setup can be used but in a bigger setup uh, uv sterilization uh, can be done or um, there the, 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 there are places wherein as i discussed has to go to aerosol sterilization is being done depending upon the, the hospital policies uh, it has to be used but in a smaller setup either using for n95 masks uh, by using the sunlight or keeping aside or uh, at least two n95 masks wherein a microwave can be used in which uh, by steam we can denaturize the mask uh, uh, last question for the day is asked by dr wasim is asking nowadays many patients are drinking cold water and come with acute pharyngitis or uh, tonsillitis how can we avoid examining the throat of the patient <laughs> yeah uh, valid valid uh, question dr wasim uh, so the reason uh, uh, before examining the patient what is the reason why we are examining right the reason for why we are examining is to make a clinical diagnosis of these patients so oh, if if you think that uh, examining this patient is uh, the, the the sore throat or the pharyngitis either by drinking cold water allergic uh, thing or a viral thing or a bacterial thing unless proven otherwise all patients are covid positive we have to keep it in mind right second thing is whenever uh, there is a dire requirement of uh, examining the patient it's better you wear a proper ppe including the face shield and examine that one by using a, a flexible endoscope by being away from the patient either uh, or examine it or the second thing that uh, can be done is you can stand by the uh, on on the back side of the patient use your uh, mirror which is used for indirect laryngoscope right and ask the patient to open the mouth by standing behind keep the indirect laryngoscope mirror uh, close to his mouth and examine uh, examine the things Uh, these are the two things that come to my mind either you use a flexible endoscope uh, by staying away or stand behind the patient and use an indirect laryngoscope ask the patient to open the mouth and examine his pharynx okay with this uh, as a fun of our uh, attendees has put in the comment section that it's a webinar is very timely and very informative session so with the, uh, i thank both the speakers thank you. as well as thank attendees you. and uh, uh, umda healthcare for initiating this uh, webinar Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for Thank you. thanks for conducting. Thanks for moderating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for participation. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.